All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, excited to be chatting with an individual who's going to be competing at Uriah Faber's A1 Combat, the third event, and that goes down on May the 29th for the vacant A1C Flyweight Championship. Jack Duffy and Keanu Moy are getting out there on UFC Fight Pass and excited to be welcoming Keanu onto the show again. How's your day going so far, man? It's going good. I already had practice this morning. I had... Uh, boxing sparring this morning, um, and then I got to run later today, so uh, it's going good. It's uh, pretty awesome. I'm so excited for this fight coming up, and, and yeah, man, it's just uh, every single day, it's just a daily routine for me. Uh, to be a martial artist is really just a, uh, a real blessing, and it's amazing, honestly. Yeah, and I was listening to some of our kind of older interviews there, and just like that appreciation coming through, and a lot of the interviews like never losing sight of the fact that this was a dream for you like how do you I guess keep grounded within that is it something you have to be like conscious about like getting lost in like the daily grind of it or is it just like you're always beaming just realizing this was your dream since you were a younger lad man honestly it's just if if you've been doing it for so long like I have it's just it's became my life it's my whole entire life, everything revolves around fighting, you know, and, um, to be a true martial artist, you have to train in every, every martial arts, you know, and I take that very serious. That's why today I was training in boxing, sparring, and then later on today, I'll be doing my cardio, going for a run. So it's just, I take every aspect of martial arts very serious and it's just became my whole life. Yeah. It's became my whole life. Yeah, I mean, I love talking to you about that kind of stuff. Like, you really have that, like, ethos of, like, the lifestyle of a martial artist going for you, no doubt. But before we were talking, you were saying that the timeline leading into this fight was a bit crazy. I'm sort of wondering what you mean by that. Like, what are the details behind that there? It's just uh, my upcoming opponent, Jack Duffy, was supposed to fight, or, yeah, was supposed to fight my last opponent that beat me, Jesse Tafoya, for the vacant belt. And they got into a little scuffle at the weigh-ins. And uh, Jesse ended up getting suspended, wasn't able to take the fight coming up uh, later on this month. So they reached out to me, the matchmaker did, and they or they didn't reach out to me, they reached out to my manager. And they offered me the fight. And, yeah, I'm just it, – it's, it's not very heard of or very common to come off of a loss and then get a title shot, especially so quickly. Like I just fought in February, and now I'm fighting again. Um, it's it's now owned by Uri Faber, so it's a different promotion. But uh, it's still the same matchmakers and everything, and the same guys that are running it behind the scenes. So it's uh, uh, I'm used to this, uh, and I'm just yeah, it's just crazy how things work. It really is basically like a butterfly effect, really. Uh, me and me and Jack have a little bit of a backstory, which is pretty, uh, which helps helps. It doesn't motivate me more. I'm motivated all the time, but it really does light a, a fire under my ass a little bit because I, when people talk, when people run their mouth to me, I love shutting their mouth and I love being doubted. And it, and it really, it, yeah, it just lights a fly, fire under my ass. It really does. And yeah, I'm just, I'm super pumped to go out there and put on a show for everybody and get this W. Yeah, there's a lot of intriguing components leading into this fight. Yeah, very interesting that it's still like the same lineal kind of promotion but I was liking how I guess you took the last fight there because I mean like you said it was like a fairly quick outing there but I mean you just looked at it in a lot of regards it's like oh yeah well you know I got out there with like a really game tough opponent and everything like that and just you know is what it is sort of thing so like I guess what were the main takeaways from that last one it probably just emboldened the effort in the gym even further like that already strong work ethic it seems like you probably took it in that kind of way I would think honestly just you learn so much more from a loss than you do from a win and you can win over and over. But when you take that, when you take a significant loss, like I did, like I've never been, I've never been dropped like that. I've never been TKO'd like that. That was my first time with an amateur pro. That was my first time. And I just got caught for the first time and you learn so much from it. You learn. Yeah, man, you really, uh, when you win, you know exactly what you did. Whether whether it was anything that you practiced, you know it was it was what it was what was supposed to happen. It's a win. You know, you go in there to win every single time. Nobody goes in there to lose. But when you take that loss, man, it's just it's just really eye opening. It really opened my eyes to a lot of things and made me train up change up my training a little bit and focus on a lot of different things. And 
And you got to make sure that you're a hundred percent physically there always, but you got to make sure every fight, no matter what you're a hundred percent mentally there mentally, it, mentally being prepared is so important, honestly. And, um, you know, I'm just now getting into my sixth fight. So I've, I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit of an experience as a pro and, you know, um, yeah, just the men, mental preparation for a fight is very key. And I didn't really realize that until you, until you take a couple losses and then you start getting your mentality right and you get your mental strength right and you, yeah, you just prepare a lot differently. And that's what I'm doing for this fight. I really do take my mental preparation serious. Yeah, and just to that point, like what is that, you know, mental prep methodology? Like how do you get ready for subsequent fights after some of these lessons, lessons learned there? Well, uh, positive affirmations really help, you know, listening to those every morning, making sure that you uh, reaffirm yourself that you are that you were born for this, that you are going to be a champion, that you were made for this, that you're confident in yourself, that you, you know, just doing stuff like that, doing meditation. Like when when I go for my runs, I run with no uh, music, no headphones. And that really just really that right there is a mental preparation right there because it's just you out there in that cage. And when you're running, when you get tired, when you get to that, like I really push myself during my runs. Um, and you really just, you just, you just, you just zone out. And that's how it is in the fight. It's just you and your opponent. And, and you just, you're, you guys are in your own world. That's how it is when you're running. So just certain things, you know, I just, yeah, man, it's just stuff like that. Like that, that really helps out. Um, really what helps out is prayer as well like you know praying a lot i've been also like reaching out to my lord and savior jesus christ uh praying to him and you know just yeah simple stuff like that that's the that's the key thing if if things really start getting like really tough um eventually in my career i might get a a, a mental coach or like a yeah a mental coach to help help you help me out and you know, but right now, I, those are just simple things that I'm doing just to help my mental strength. And that, that has really helped me a lot, a lot compared to my last camp. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of cool facets to that there. You were talking about, like, the running and stuff like that. Like, in the years we've been doing interviews, it seems like the amount of miles you run a day keeps getting upped and up. So, like, where are we at nowadays in terms of the daily miles for the running? Man, I try to run every other day to split it out because I train six days a week. So you don't want to overdo it with the running because of how how many miles I run per week. But I'm running upwards to 13 to 15 miles per week. So either three to five miles every every session, and that's three times a week. So, yeah, it's, and then that's also with training six days a week. So by the end of this camp, I should be putting in about 60 miles. 55 to 60 miles and that's a four-week camp so yeah that's a lot of miles that's a lot of cardio and that's a lot of mental preparation that's a lot of work on the road you're there by yourself it's it's just you in that cage by yourself and that's what it's like running you got to learn how to push yourself yeah good mentality to have with it but i was you know touching on like how long we've been doing interviews there and stuff like that like since about like late 2017 when you were a five and one ami we're talking about growth and development and stuff like that like what what are the biggest differences between the keanu moyer i first talked to and the keanu moyer that i'm talking to now oh man i've just grown so much as a as an adult as a human being man i've just matured so much my mentality has definitely changed in life in general, like, you know, I know 100% that I'm made for this. This is my career. You know, it's different when you're coming up as an amateur. You know that, you know, you know, especially how long I've been doing it. I've been doing it since I was 15. You know, I, I knew that this is something that I should take very serious and it could be a career. But once you go pro, man, it's like, really, you're in the pros. You're a professional fighter. And, yeah, man, it's just crazy. Um, I became so much more technical. Like, I'm a real... Uh, I used to just be a wild fighter. Like, I would just go in there and just look for the kill, and I'd still do that for sure, but I'm really, like, I like I like uh, being technical now. I really try to set set things up and make sure that, you know, um, yeah, make it look as clean as possible. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to... I want to make sure that my career lasts. I want to have longevity in MMA, and I want to make sure that I'm able to make my career last as long as I wanted to. I don't want to have to fight past 
uh, a certain point, make money or whatever. I want to be able to retire when I want to. And in order to do that, I got to make sure that I don't get myself hurt in that cage. And that's what I've really worked on. Like any of my fights, whether I win or lose, I'm not getting hurt. And that's really important. And especially as a pro, that's really important to, to make sure that your career lasts long. And also, man, I'm just, I'm just in a dis- whole different mindset. Like back, back when I was, yeah, back when I was an amateur, I was just coming up. I was just so angry. I just had so much going on in my life. You know, I was just mad at the world. And now I'm just, man, I'm just at peace. Honestly, I'm just at peace with the world. I'm at peace with myself. And yeah, I'm just happy to be where I'm at in life, honestly. Yeah, I love hearing that, man. And it really comes across in a lot of regards. But like earlier in the conversation, you were touching on how this fight kind of has a unique kind of localized timeline to yourself because you were saying when you were 19, you called out your upcoming opponent to fight and he was like, oh, you're a scrub. Like, you'll never be on my level. If we do fight, you know, he'd smoke you. Like, things to that effect. Like, can you offer up a little insight on the backstory there between yourself and your opponents? It seems like it's been kind of brewing for a few years now. Yeah, well, uh, I had my first amateur title fight coming up, and uh, he had put up a, his fight against Saint Shane Sargent. That's his last fight, and I would, I just like, I felt like J- George St. Pierre. I just, I, even though I was an amateur, I had no <laughs> pro fights at all. I just wasn't impressed with it. I just seen it. And I'm like, man, that just looks like you're beating up a scrub. That's pretty easy, man. Like you are fighting a dude that has no wins. You have no amateur career at all. You know, like, I have to make my way up in order to go pro. And he just jumped right into the pro leagues um, against scrubs, which is how you make yourself look really good um, to come up as a pro. Um, But, you know, I called him out, and he said to me those exact things. And he said, I got to get my record up as a pro, and then – it's just crazy. It really is the butterfly effect. Now I'm fighting him in his hometown, and I'm going to go whoop his ass, take his O, and take that belt. And it's just awesome because, you know, this is how the world works. You know, he's saying to me, be careful what you ask for. Well, the last time that we talked, like five years ago when I called him out, he said he's one fight away from the UFC. He's one fight or one fight away from the UFC or being in the Dana White Contender Series. And now, look, it's been five years. I have more fights. This is my sixth fight. I have more fights than him in the last two years than he's had in his whole pro career. It's like you're a wannabe fighter. Those, that's what I call those people. They're a wannabe fighter. They get to walk around their town because he lives out in Sacramento, trains that team alpha male. So he gets to tell people I'm a pro fighter. It's awesome. But guess what I am? I'm going to be a world champion come fight night, and he's going to figure out that, figure that out the hard way. Yeah, he hasn't competed in a decent while either, I've noticed, like about four and a half years there. But yeah, I mean, in looking at his record too, it looks like he's that 100% finishing rate. But it doesn't seem like you're particularly impressed by that. Maybe the quality of competition wasn't there in your estimation across the four first round finishes there. Yeah, man, it's just like I have two first round finishes against real now national ranked opponents like the dude that i beat sam panitz that he was making his day pro debut but he was 13 and one and had four different amateur belts in four different organizations so that's a real opponent and the guy that i beat mike tabera he's fought for combate and combate uh and he's fought he comes from a world-class gym he comes from mma gold so he's whether he has uh this great record or not that's a world class that's a real fighter right there so, yeah, my competition compared to his is a lot different, you know. I went down to Miami, whether I won or lost, I fought a 3-0 and opponent that comes from a world-class gym on UFC Fight Pass. So, you know, and for my debut, I fought a dude that has way more fights than me on King of the, Ca- on King of the Cage on national television. So I've been here. I've done this. He's, he doesn't know what it feels like. It's been five years. It's all going to be new to him all over. I just did this a couple months ago. So this is... It's all in my favor. All the pressure's on him. He's supposed to win this fight. He's 5-0. and I'm coming off a loss. So let the pressure be on him. And it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be awesome when I get this KO or submission. And I come back, and I say, and new. Yeah, and it seems like the title is a very important kind of distinction just in terms of, like, representing that progression in the career and just, like, the last one being 
the title bid where I imagine that'd be frustrating in a certain sense where you probably wanted to show off the skills a little bit more like I mean obviously the winning and losing is kind of like you learn from it either way but just the opportunity to show the skills even further there and just we also talked about the I guess personal connection with the opponent here so kind of an inter- interesting fight in a few regards it's like there's the redemptive kind of component with the title being on the line again getting another crack at that hardware there but also just the maybe validation kind of component potentially coming from like a trash talking opponent from years back so can you kind of talk about those facets and maybe just your general temperament and the mindset leading into it yeah man honestly (laughs) for my last like three fights i have had no problems with my opponents at all like you know i have had no animosity with them and it's not that i need to have animosity with my opponents or some type of beef with them for me in order for me to like yeah, to light some fire under my ass. No, that's not that's not what it is. It's just it it just it just it makes me want to whoop his ass a little more. It really does. <laughs> like he talked, he's been talking shit, and you know when somebody runs their mouth, it we really we get to step into the cage against each other. So no matter what we get, no matter what's been said against each other, it's all gonna be hashed out come fight night. And I'm like, I'm not planning on shaking hands with him after. Afterwards, I don't plan on being friends with him afterwards, especially because of what's been said between us. But at the end of the day, we get to fight. So, you know, I'm I'm completely fine with the war of words. I'm completely fine with the mental warfare. I'm definitely I I love it. Honestly, I really love it. It helps. It helps. Ah, just it just this this especially because for my last three opponents I don't have had no beef with them so now it just really just like ah I really just want to sock his freaking jaw off his face and that's what I'm gonna do I get to do it fight night and thirteen no twelve days I get to do it so yeah and I'm just again whether whether it's for the fight or in life I'm just at peace I'm just so just so relaxed and so calm and you know um, don't get me wrong don't get me wrong. Everybody has nerves. I have, I've had nerves, especially for this fight, coming up fight. It's a big fight for me, you know. It's a big deal. But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. It's just I'm at peace. These just nerves. They come and go. It's like Wusaw. Just come and go. In with the air, out with the air. So all I got to do, breathe in, breathe out. And, you know, I, I have a clear mentality for this fight. I know what I have to do. It's very simple. Get my hand raised. It doesn't matter what it's. By. It doesn't matter by knockout, submission, by decision. All I have to do is fight this man for 25 minutes or less and get my belt. And that's what's going to happen. I'm going to get my belt. Mark my words. Yeah, and last time we were talking, you were working with Ishmael White a fair bit, it seemed like. Is that still kind of the training dynamic leading into this one? Like, where are you honing the skills ahead of this one? Yeah, I have my head MMA coach Ishmael White. He's helping me with my MMA striking overall, and just he's just his he he his eyes. He's able to see certain things and just able to fix a lot of things that help me with my fight game in general, whether it be on the ground and the clinch, standing up. He just helps me out overall. And then I have my boxing coach that since the last time we talked. Uh, I wasn't working with him full-time, but now I have a full-time boxing coach that I've been working with for the last two years. Every day, six days out of the week, I'm working with him, whether whether it be just boxing or he's helping me with... Uh, he's now being able to transfer over into being an MMA boxing coach. So he's able to see things like, don't do this or don't do that, because in boxing it will get you caught. Uh, yeah, so... Those are, the, those are my main striking coaches right there. And then I got 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. I'm over there a couple of days out of the week doing my Jiu-Jitsu, helping me out. Those They got some great, uh, just great coaching in general, honestly. Like, um, if anybody's ever in town, make sure to stop by either one of those gyms. My main gym, Equip Academy, out in Gresham, Oregon, or, or Portland, Oregon. It's close to Gresham. And 10th Planet Portland. Both of those gyms, literally, you get your you could you could get your striking at uh, Ken's Planet, but I recommend going to my gym because you know I got some great coaching, great coaches for striking, and then you get great no gi jiu jitsu, which has helped me for my MMA overall game. And yeah, man, those are, that's who I've been working with, and um, you know I do my own thing with my strength and condition, strength and conditioning. Honestly, I, I'm at a low weight class. 
So I'm at flyweight. I don't like lifting weights. I don't like, uh, I really don't like doing too much, honestly, because I train so much. So if you train six days out of the week, there's like, you only have so much time in a day, you know, you, it, especially because I'm working part time. You know, I have a job. I have other things to do. I have a life outside of fighting. It, my life does revolve around fighting, but there's, I'm an adult, you know, so I have other things going on. And it's just like, you got to find time for the things that are truly important. And I, I feel like the most – Darren Pill really made a valid point about this. He said this. He's like, you could do all the strength and conditioning you want. You could do all the pad work you want. You could do all that, right? But the the most important things really, honestly, are sparring, getting your cardio right, which is running, and, you know – working with real coaches that are able to help you out in overall, like your overall game. That's what you need. You need to be progressing, especially when you're a pro, you need to get better and better and better. And that's what I feel like I've been doing, especially the last couple months. I've really, uh, yeah, I'll just be able to show you fight night. I've just really worked on a lot and I can't wait to show everybody. Yeah, for sure. And kind of you were talking earlier about just like being familiarized with certain big stages and big opportunities and just cool to see, you, you know, back on UFC Fight Pass for this one after the, you know, Titan FC foray previously. So some familiarity there as well, no doubt. But yeah, this is a, a fun fight and really looking forward to peeping it, man. But I also want to be mindful of the, your time and the rest of your schedule and all that too, Keanu. So is there anything you might want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping things up here, man? Oh, man. Honestly, I just thank you for having me on the show once again. It's always awesome talking to you. You're a freaking really dope person. You know, <laughs> all your posts on Instagram crack me up, and it's just <laughs> been awesome to follow you throughout your career, just like how you've been following me. It's really awesome to see people that you talked with when, like, yeah, like when we were both making our way up, and now we are, yeah, where we should be, and it's really awesome. And I'd always, I always want to give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, none of this would be possible. I wouldn't be here, and I'm just truly blessed. I want to give a shout-out to my coaches, Ishmael White, George Gonzalez, and my main gym, Equip Academy, and 10th Planet of Portland. Thank you guys so much for helping me out. Honestly, I feel like I've grown so much with the, uh, just ha having – you know, it really does, they say it takes a village to raise a child. I'm no longer a child, but really, I'm a pro fighter, and really, I I thank everybody so much, everybody that helps me out. It doesn't matter if it's an up-and-comer. It doesn't matter if this person has just began. I really am so thankful for everybody in the MMA community that has helped me out, especially in my community out here in Portland. And I want to give a shout-out to my mama. Thank you so much, Mom, for raising me into the person that I am, to the man that I am. I thank you so much. You're a great person. You taught me how to be a hard worker, to work for everything that I want. And I just love you so much. Thank you for everything. And shout-out to my pops. You're a great father. You're awesome. You're a great dude. And I can't wait to come out to Colorado and bring my belt out to the restaurant that you own, Mail Side Inn, one day. And... Yeah, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors as well. Can't forget them. You know, without them, I wouldn't be fighting all the time. I've had fucking five fights. This will be my sixth fight. Yeah, this will be my sixth fight with within the last two years because of them. So I can't, I would not be fighting if it was not for them. Thank you so much to PDX Sliders. You guys have been sponsoring me since literally my third, yeah, my third amateur title fight. That's been years ago. I thank you guys so much. You guys are so awesome. Shout out to Ryan Rollins. You are the boss, man. You are the dopest. Thank you so much. I remember growing up in that community over there in the Selwood community, going to the Boys and Girls Club, and now I'm sponsored by a, by a local business right there. So that's really awesome, man. I'm so thankful. Uh, they have two different locations. One in Selwood, Moreland location, and they also have one in Southeast Portland. If you're ever in town, make sure to check them out. If you live in Portland and you haven't been there, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Make sure to go there ASAP. I got to give a shout out to Ready Player Cards as well. They are my uh, other sponsor. My older brother owns that company. It's a small local business out here in Portland, Oregon that sells Pokemon cards, Dragon Ball Z cards, UFC cards. Any type of card you could think of, you could get it from them. And they also help me with my merchandise for my fight as well. So if you want to pick up a sweater or any shirts, you can hit them up. And yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just freaking, I'm super stoked. Seriously. 
12 days until they say, and the new. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a sweet fight. And yeah, people can check that out via UFC Fight Pass, as I was saying earlier. It goes down on May the 29th. And yeah, going to be cool to see that A1C flyweight championship fight against Jack Duffy there. And thanks for coming on the show again, Keanu. And just looking forward to peeping the fight. You enjoy the rest of your day too, though, man. Awesome. Thank you for having me again. Seriously, man. And yeah, you enjoy your day as well.